I'd like to welcome Mauricio Clavacarone, who is the president of the Inter-American Development Bank. He's been in this post for just about two months now. Mauricio, thank you so much for joining us today to talk about how the bank works with the private sector to create growth and encourage development in Latin America and the Caribbean. So the first thing I'd like to chat about is public-private partnerships. And you've yeah. said that those are the key to success for the IDB. Why is that the case? Yeah. Well, first and foremost, I've actually said that PPPs in general is the key to success, but public-private partnerships, not power, politics, and patronage. And unfortunately, sometimes in 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 uh, uh, whether it's in in our countries or in these institutions, you know, the power, the politics, and the patronage takes over. Uh, what we need to focus on is the public-private partnerships, and there's a huge amount of energy to do so. Why? Because every country is different, right? At the end of the day, as you know, here at the IDB, we have. The, the, the public side uh, in the group. And then also we have IDB Invest, which is our private side. Uh, we've done through our sector side, uh, we've done a great deal of work with all of the 26 borrowing nations in regards to helping them create uh, the framework, the legal framework for public-private partnerships so that we can scale uh, the amount of investments that we as a bank make. Look, at the end of the day, we don't have uh, all of the money in order to meet the financing needs of countries, right? And nor should we, right? At the end of the day, uh, they need to create the environment to attract the private sector investment uh, that is necessary. Uh, we obviously want to be there to respond to uh, public crises. We want to help them uh, in their policy frameworks. Uh, and we want to help them uh, be able to attract that uh, investment. I think at this time and the priorities that we've set forth, and, and particularly after the pandemic and after the crises, the three uh, um, uh, focuses that we've had on digitalization, small, medium-sized enterprises, and nearshoring, you know, which is which is really kind of like the 21st century, well, not 21st century, but the modern day uh, 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 integration. It's really kind of the next step of integration or the great opportunity of integration. You know, for that, you need to have good public-private partnership frameworks in order to help attract those investments, in order to help take that initial step and to make sure that those investments stay there. So the opportunities are there. They're apt for the taking. Uh, there was a recent study uh, from UBS that said 75% of companies, of U.S. companies in China are either looking at relocating or are, or are either relocating or considering relocating. That's a huge opportunity. You know who the number one beneficiary from that would be? Right here, Latin America and the Caribbean, our 26 borrowing nations. So we need to work with them so that they have the frameworks necessary so that we can help with financing instruments, knowledge, uh, et cetera, uh, so that they can be the number one recipient of that relocation, uh, because that's our job in the IDB is to serve our 26 borrowing nations. And Latin America and the Caribbean is unfortunately one of the hardest hit regions in the world from the pandemic and was suffering from low growth even before COVID-19 hit. So how are you thinking about the way that the bank um, will work in this public-private partnership mindset to create jobs coming out of the pandemic? Yeah, because because the cookie is right next to the mouth, right? So, you know, there's nothing better than when you have that nice warm cookie and you can smell it uh, right out of the oven and it's there and you want to eat it. You know, that makes you want to eat it more than everything. And as I just mentioned in the last question, you, you literally have U.S. companies, companies from throughout the world that really for the first time want to integrate. They learn from the pandemic the importance of having the supply chains near to home, uh, uh, how it's good for, for, for their transactional costs, for their transportation, uh, for health emergencies, uh, for everything. And it's there. Like They're saying, I want to do this, but I need to go where I feel secure, where the frameworks exist, where, where we're welcome, where the policies are prone uh, for this investment. Uh, and so therefore, if you're smelling the cookie and it's right next to your mouth and it's really warm, you're going to want to do the right thing. It's not a pipe dream. Look, in, in the 1990s, everyone talked about the free trade area of the Americas and everyone talks about integration and Pan-Americanism. And this has been something since the 19th century, frankly. This is the first time in modern times, even when people were talking about the free trade area of the Americas, they were looking at doing business in China. This is the first time that it's not only political will, but the corporate will exist to really bring in uh, these investments to the region. And if we miss that opportunity, uh, there's nothing, one thing is not even knowing what the cookie looks like. Another thing is looking at it, smelling it, just knowing what it tastes like and having it fall right on your feet. You don't want to do that. So I think there's a huge amount of will. There's a huge amount of, 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 of kind of cohesive combined work uh, that we're doing with these countries that they're finally going to see the, those that have done their homework and that have been working on these, 
uh, are going to see really the fruits of their labor pay off. Uh, and those that aren't are going to want to. So it's really a win-win across the board here. And we're really taking a leadership role in working with uh, our 26 borrowing nations in order not to see the train pass the station, in order to really take opportunity, uh, make sure that these opportunities exist. Because look, we're talking about jobs. You know, there's no greater socioeconomic impact for these countries and particularly the recuperation from this pandemic than job creation. You know, we saw now Ford uh, is opening up a new, a new plant in Uruguay. That's like 2000 jobs, super important. They were gonna expand in Turkey. Instead, they're going to Uruguay. We're looking at another big project in Paraguay that has the potential of creating up to 20,000 jobs in Paraguay. It's a cellulose uh, 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 production facility uh, that could be up to 20,000 direct and indirect jobs. This is job creation. You know, these, this helps families. That's 20,000 families that then will have greater access to, to, to health care, uh, that, that will then be, be fiscal income for the countries in order to expand their social services. I mean, this is a win-win-win across the board. So we need to make sure that we take advantage of this opportunity and don't miss out on it. And let me tell you, as energized as I am about it, we are not resting. By the way, one of the things that I'm really excited about is before, as I get excited about it, I'm really, I, I, this is very exciting to me. This whole this exciting topic, so I'm really glad you're focusing on this. We're looking to launch by the end of the year. You're going to see we're going to launch a nearshoring toolkit, uh, which goes precisely towards this and helping uh, uh, the countries that we already have partnerships with and are working on in regards to uh, public-private partnerships and as well as their investment agencies, uh, in order to then also provide some type of financing mechanisms to those uh, companies that are looking to re relocate so that we can take advantage of this, so we can create jobs in the region, we can have a great socioeconomic impact on those populations. And another thing that you have mentioned frequently, in addition to nearshoring, is the importance of digitalization for the region. And obviously, that has come to play an even more key piece in all of our lives um, than before during the pandemic. But so many people and households in Latin America are not connected, um, and this is now impeding, you know, their their future prospects, their ability to have a job. Um, and a lot of folks can't work from home. You know, they can't just sit in their living room and do their job. So, how can the IDB work with the private sector? on improving digital infrastructure around digitalization, um, thinking about not only access to the internet, but price and quality of someone's digital connection as well. And, and you took the words right out of my mouth. It's not just access, which is really important because we want to make sure particularly rural communities and vulnerable populations have access, but uh, uh, price and quality are going to be key. Look, we've already engaged. Uh, we've had a, a very strong engagement with Microsoft already and are looking to engage with other uh, partners in the digital sphere to make sure how we can take advantage of this opportunity uh, in order to ensure uh, that populations across the region are having access to uh, a good quality, price competitive uh, um, um, a digital, uh, digital, digital sphere and digital media. Because what, what happens here is uh, it's not only about, it's kind of all of it put together. It's the markets that you know, people that want to create their small, medium-sized enterprises can then go out there and create. It's no longer about oh, my I live in a country that's too small or in a town that's too small. You know, the the, the digital sphere will make the world yours in that regard. It's about employment, employment opportunities. I don't have to go to the big city uh, to have a job. You know, I can work from uh, my small town. I can work from uh, my medium-sized city uh, because it, it allows you that labor mobility, labor flexibilization uh, of the 21st century, which you can do uh, uh, digitally. It helps governments. You know, we need governments to be more efficient. Governments need to be able to serve their populations to be more efficient. Uh, if you can digitalize uh, government, then you can open up that small, medium-sized enterprise a lot easier. Uh, you can you can get across that red tape uh, that has inhibited the entrepreneurism uh, that we see uh, in 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 the, in the region. Look, I'm from Miami, and what I said day one of my uh, uh, when I came in uh, when I when I took when I when I took uh, office here at the IDB is that I have seen. Every single community of those 26 borrowing nations thrive in Miami in opening up a business uh, and creating uh, some type of enterprise. They can, the human capital is there. There is no region in the world that's richer in human capital, Latin America and the Caribbean, that has more entrepreneurialism in Latin America and the Caribbean, is the, is the opportunities. And digitalization will also help governments really break through that red tape so that people can have the opportunities in their own countries to access markets, to create their small, medium-sized businesses, to have access to financing financial inclusion as well. So you can have a uh, financing. So you, uh, it's, 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 it's bound with opportunities. It's one of the things that we've been engaging in. It's one of the things that we're uh, working on also in regards to creating that infrastructure where it lacks it. I mean, I mean, there's, there's a, a, just take this data point, you know, 10% deeper penetration for broadband in the region is a three to 4% increase in GDP over a couple of year period. That's wow. huge. 
That's huge. That's huge because all of that comes together. So that's what we're focusing on. We're focusing all the way from the infrastructure side to the access side, to the financial inclusion side, to the government uh, red tape side, all across the sphere. Digitization encompasses it all. And we're focused on every single aspect of it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mauricio, for joining us today. It was really a pleasure to chat with you and hear a little bit about your plans um, at the IDB. And thank you again so much for making the time to be with us today. Our pleasure. Thank you very much for the invitation. Anytime.